May I speak with Anton Zeilinger, please? Yes, that's me. Hello, my name is Adam Smith, calling from NobelPrize.org. Uh, can you just hold on for a second? Just a moment, please. Yes. Please hold the line. Hello. As you may know, we, we have a tradition of recording extremely short interviews with new laureates. Yes, absolutely. Actually, I saw, I saw yesterday the interview you did with Swante Piebo, whom, <laughs> whom I know very well, actually. <laughs> Oh, well, then, <laughs> then you already know what questions might be coming. <laughs> <laughs> right. How, how did you hear the news? Well, just when, when the, when the uh, Secretary General uh, called me and uh, told me, uh, yeah. this uh, was at 11 o'clock. Uh, I was sitting at home working on some paper. You know, and well, they came the, the, the phone call. Yeah. And what? And what was your first reaction or action upon hearing the news? Uh, I, I, I was speechless. I'm still, I'm still kind of. Uh, <laughs> I don't know what to say. <laughs> I mean, this is a fantastic appreci appreciation. I would emphasize. Uh, uh, it's also. A, a huge appreciation for the for all the people who, who who I worked with, you know, starting from my teacher Helmut Rau, who started foundations work in Vienna in the nineteen uh, late sixties, early seventies, when this was really a curiosity, but it was encouraging for me. And then, and then I was just uh, thought of of you know hundred fifty or even more students who ever worked with me. And I appreciate everyone. This was this is this really something. It's a very nice thing to say because of course science is a very social thing and I, I imagine that's one of the key reasons that you've spent decades doing this, that it's just such a lovely activity being with all these great people around you. Well uh I mean, it, it's lovely to work, to see the excitement in the eyes of of, of, of uh, young people when they realize how interesting this we are working on. And for myself, it was uh, it was just curiosity. It was always curiosity, and still is curiosity. And I, I, I you know, I, I made possible some uh, work on applications in my group. But my interest is always curiosity. This is, you know, life is life is short, and I'm still curious to see what will happen in the in the in the near future, <laughs> or in the future. But as long as I'm alive, I don't know how long how long I can follow this anymore. It, it, the, the concepts are very hard to get one's head around. I mean, for for ordinary people, quantum mechanics is a mysterious world, but it, it's a world that has been so um, robust that it's held up to every challenge. It's quite remarkable, isn't it? Uh, that is actually really, really remarkable. Uh, uh, you know, there are two things which are remarkable about quantum physics. One is that uh, it is absolutely robust uh, against all experimental challenges. Uh, uh, it's like, the, you know, the, the predictions uh, which the theory makes for experiments are, are confirmed to incredible precision and, and even in the most most counterintuitive uh, uh, ways. Uh, uh, but on the other hand, the theory is also mathematically extremely beautiful. You know, it's a, it's, it's one it's probably one of the be most beautiful theories ever invented by mankind. And these are two features which are so enormous. Uh, and, you know, I, I try to convey this also to the general public, so I, I, I like to give talks about about this to, to just, you know, regular people who have no, no background. And I have a feeling that people can appreciate that. It's really lovely to hear you talk about the, the joy to be gained from the beauty of a mathematical formula, mm -hmm. even though, of course, most of us can't quite see that beauty for ourselves, but to have it translated is a very special thing. Yeah, I mean, the beauty is, is 
I, I don't know how to de- define the mathematical beauty, but it's probably that there's very few symbols, very few symbols which are which are arranged, arranged actually in some kind of symmetric way. You can explain a whole lot of things from the from the you know from the smallest quantum particles up to the origin of the universe, and that that is that that is just beautiful. It's amazing. It's not a complicated thing in the basic. In the basic, quantum mechanics has very few very simple simple points. <laughs> I can't let you go with ask, asking about the, the the phenomenon of teleportation because they mention it in the press release, and I think people right. will be very excited by the mention of this word, I am. What it- well, yeah, we all know teleportation from, from Star Trek and so on, where somebody is transported. Uh, 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 teleportation in, in quantum physics is, is somewhat different. It's a transfer of information and the reconstitution of this new matter. Uh, like, you know, if you think basically, uh, and the, the information is actually what defines everything. Like, your body is is defined by the information how how uh, how the atoms are arranged. And it doesn't matter whether I exchange you, for example, the carbon molecules in your, in your body against some other. So the matter is not important. Information is important. And using this quantum entanglement, one can transfer the information from one object to another one without actually knowing the information. This is a, actually, this is actually quite puzzling. It's quite interesting. But it's, it's extremely beautiful. <laughs> It sounds, yes, both beautiful and potentially incredibly useful in the future. Well, the point is that, that this is a, a base, this is one of the bases of uh, how future quantum computers can talk to each other. Mm. They, can, they can send information from one quantum computer to another one. Um, an am- amazing world is opening up. Um, it's been a huge pleasure speaking to you. I, we look forward to seeing you in Stockholm in December. Yes, yes. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Okay, bye-bye. If you enjoyed this moment, we have another special episode you won't want to miss on Nobel Prize origin stories. We present clips of laureates recalling formative moments and Adam explores the unexpected factors that can shape the lives and careers of these great minds. Find it on Acast or wherever you listen to podcasts. Podcasts.